Now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hook up. Get ready for more of the best fishing information and the hottest tips on improving your angling skills. Let's Talk Hook Up is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hook Up. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano. And now, Southern California's sports fishing voice, the hosts of Let's Talk Hook Up, Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Back, hour number two, Let's Talk Hook Up, right here on the Let's Talk Hook Up app and the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Pete Gray here, along with Rock Cod Rick Maxa, in the world headquarters of Let's Talk Hook Up, right next to a very busy San Diego landings, because the parking lot is being transformed <laughs> right now into Day at the Docks, which is happening tomorrow. We'll be broadcasting live there. It's going to be great. We have such a great show going on here with a couple of super guys. Captain Ali Husseini from BD Outdoors, Local Knowledge, Fish Dope, blah, 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 blah. Well, Whatever, yeah. yeah, and Yosef, <laughs> his brother Yosef Husseini, the angler's realtor, learning a lot about the current real estate market and, and how good Yosef is at finding you a buyer or a seller uh, or selling way, whatever you need. He's got you covered, especially he works with anglers all the time, and it's just fantastic. And uh, and we're giving away one phenomenal prize, two phenomenal prizes. I was going to say, right? we're giving away one phenomenal prize to two different people. Yeah, really cool day, and uh, so stoked and appreciate. Uh, Ollie and everybody from uh, Fish Dope. Yeah, two lucky uh, winners today. Going to win a full one-year membership to fishdope.com. We've been talking a bunch about it today for very good reason. And yeah, two lucky people are going to win it. One caller and one texter are going to get that full-year membership to fishdope.com. Again, if you want to give us a call this morning, it's 213-432-1090 or there's been a tremendous amount of text messages that have come through this morning. And sending a text is only available through the Let's Talk Cook up app and again got to urge make sure you include your contact info when you send a text in as well for sure and we always say it you you know we get a hundred texts a show and we can only read a few uh the best way to have a chance to win that fishdope.com membership is on the phones 213-432-1090 now normally we have our fish report right sure yeah but mark wish is sick today. Hey, we'll get he, better, Mark. Yeah, get better, Mark, and uh, we'll look forward to having him back next Saturday, but uh, he wanted to be sure to throw out a big uh, big happy birthday to Danny at Fish Dope, because he works with Danny all the time to get his information on Fish Dope from Danny, so Danny, hope you're having a good celebration down there in the in the Keys and enjoying life. He's loving it down That's there, right. man. Yeah, yeah, he's loving it. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, and, and uh, so we'll, we'll continue our catch report when we hear from Marcus. Yeah. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump in. I got a great okay, text great. to start us off here for okay. the second hour. It says, well, I'm stoked to hear the brothers on the show. This is one of my favorite shows of the year. Can you guys talk about how the Water Break Movement page works, um, how it gets its data, and ha- what a game changer I feel it is? And my specific question for Yusuf, what do you recommend about fixing up a vacant rental house so it's easy to get rented and get the good price? Where should I be starting? That's all for John in Huntington Beach. Um, I can start with the water one. So, John, thanks for the kind words. Um, what we're looking at on those is is you obviously want to look for the breaks and the edges, but the next thing that I'm looking for to really qualify those breaks and edges is how long they've been there for. So the longer that chunk of water or the longer that edge sits there and develops and forms, the better the odds are of the bait being pushed into it and the fish finding it. Um, you know, we've all seen it. Sometimes you run into an area offshore and there's bait everywhere and you just, your mind's blown and there's not a fish anywhere to be seen. Well, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for them to get the memo so time is a very critical component of that and and that was really how fish dope came about is you know we used to take an old terrafin chart cut it out and i'd call ricky and all the other buddies and figure out where they caught fish and i'd make marks on the chart and that generally did correspond to you know where the fish were were supposed to be on those edges and then you know it's the same thing you just want to have that time and that little bit of knowledge with the the marks on that fish dope map showing you where those fish were caught especially this time of year you know as we're 
we're starting to get into that blue fin and it's getting closer, you can watch it march right up the temperature break on our coast. Typically, there's one right now that's going to be hanging out 30 miles off the beach, give or take, and stretches from here down to San Quentin. And when those fish start moving up this way, they'll come right up it. And then a lot of times that, that break or that line will get will be broken up with a bunch of mixed up water off Ensenada with all the deep upwelling and all that. And they'll sit there. And that's where we've seen our season start the last few years has been off of Ensenada, you know, like on a hard edge or they get pushed inside on the beach and there's no good water for them to, to move up or there's just too much bait for them to leave. So the maps are really good. We get all the information from NASA, actually, and we download it. We interpret wow. it. The, the Everybody gets the same data. It's how you interpret that data. Right. And that's where I say most guys are using a computer to kind of run a filter, interpret that data, and take a best guess. We actually have guys that are fishermen that are very educated, obviously, in, in the oceanographic world that are putting those, you know, those images together and giving us that best possible image from a fishing perspective. And we're focusing on those temperature ranges where we know those fish live through experience and really dialing in the map so that you see that temperature range as good as you possibly can. That's cool. Good stuff there for sure. Well, let's jump well, into. What? Let's finish the oh, second. Oh, yeah, 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 the second part yeah. of the question with Yosef. Uh, Sorry, I'll follow up. Um, if you've got a place that you're looking to remodel and you need some help with it, um, just shoot me a text and we'll do like a FaceTime and walk through it with you. And I'll give you you know ideas on what to do there. I can also send by my buddy Ray, who's an agent up there in Huntington Beach. He's a fisherman as well, and he can go take a look at it and give you the recommendations. Do you guys have contacts with uh, uh, people to, to do the construction, the actual work and stuff like that? Definitely, proper, proper yeah. People? Yep, exactly. So we would basically go through, tell them what they need to do to get the most money out of the property. Yeah. And then if they need contractors, we can set them up with people. I've got people, Riverside, you know, OC, and a oh. ton in San Diego here. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of predator uh, real estate people out there now just – buying stuff like what he's doing and just on the cheap and then flipping it and then selling it for ungodly amounts of money, right? Totally. Do yeah. not call one of those numbers yeah. or have one Don't of those call, guys that calls uh, yeah, you those, those, that's how you lose 200 grand or, yeah. you know, very easily. Yeah, because, I mean, I mean, people call you all the time, hey, uh, we want to buy your house, we want to do this, we, you know, it's like yep. those, all they want to do is just make a quick buck. Call me instead. I'll help you make more money. Yeah. If you don't have the funds to fix it up, we've got ways of um, getting you loans to fix your place uh -huh. that you can repay back when you sell it. Yeah. So um, it, the whole thing is seeing the property, figuring out what the highest and best value is going to be for upgrades. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and lots of times I go to people's places and they, oh, you know. We need to do this. We need to do that. And lots of times there's nothing wrong with the place. No, no, so nothing wrong with it. It's, you know, you're, you're the most critical person of your own home. And you see the tiniest things that you think is wrong. Right. And many times people don't care. Right. So it can go either way. Yeah. You know. If you're, now, do you deal with people that buy houses to do rental property? Um, quite a bit. Yeah. I've been doing multifamily for like the last two years. Uh -huh. um, I've done a couple commercial properties. I'm going to have a, like a fiveplex coming up here in City Heights. Nice. Um, soon, I've got a couple duplexes in City Heights right now that are for sale. They're like the best deal on the market, fully flipped, ready wow. for renters. So, wow. anybody out there needs a property to exchange into, or just wants to buy something that cash flows, give me a call. Yeah, because the way rents are these days, yeah, no stuff doubt. cash flows like crazy. Yes. Well, it's starting to cash flow again. Yeah. You know the the price spike a couple of years ago caught up with the multifamily as well uh -huh. and it just didn't make sense unless you're putting 50 percent down gotcha. now you put 20 25 down and they're cash flowing again yeah and rents aren't going down anytime soon i don't you think know. so not it's, in san diego exactly yeah. as soon as rates drop or, so, or rates southern california well. in general yeah exactly yeah, yeah. um so uh, do you when you uh have people that buy rental property do they actually manage it themselves or do you have people that you work with that manage it for them um i've got two management companies i work with closely um that i refer people out to if they don't want to manage it themselves i recommend using somebody um one of the two is a huge fisherman one of my buddies i fish with all the time his name's richard yeah. and he takes good care of everybody i send to him he does my dad's rental properties, yeah. you know. 
takes a commission and uh, it takes a percentage or whatever, and it's it, worth every penny, I'm sure. 100%. Yeah. He's so you don't get reasonable. those midnight calls, hey, the drain's plugged. Totally. <laughs> right? Yep, exactly. He gets those calls. He does, and he even handles like Airbnbs. Uh-huh. And those are a giant pain oh, if yeah. you've ever had one or dealt with one but yeah. um he takes it all you know and he that's doesn't cool. charge what some of the other people do so that's cool and takes care of all my people so yeah that's a good thing yeah hey rick let's jump back in the phones you got it buddy how about this time we talk to hills hills calling us from ventura this morning morning hills welcome to let's talk hook up hey good morning guys um really fascinating show um on both sides with the two brothers man uh i've already learned so much just listening to you guys as always but uh, I bet all four of you guys know more about the weather next weekend than I do, and I'm uh, my buddy Chav and I are booked to go on the Angler Friday. Friday, and I'm um, just wondering if you guys think the weather is going to fish. <laughs> I haven't looked projected out of you, Ali, but it looks like we're in a pattern that's better here the next week. Yeah, I was looking, actually, while we were sitting here, because with all this weird weather we've had the last few days, that forecast is changing every hour. Um, Now we're, I mean, look out the window, now we're stabilizing, and it looks like starting like Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, looks beautiful. Um, I don't trust anything much further out than three or four or five days, but it looks like we're finally getting into a stable pattern. Um, And one of the ways you can kind of look past what the wind forecast and stuff will give you is just look at the weather on like on your iphone if it's showing it's going to be warm and sunny and clear you know 75 degrees that means high pressure and things are starting to stabilize and we got to get into this spring pattern sooner i'm going to lose my mind this is (laughs) dude i am not cut out for this cold weather man wearing boots and pants and no i'm a more tropical fellow this is yeah we're in the subtropics here supposed to be like that right this is not this kind of cold yeah no (laughs) yeah Hey, Hales, uh, you know, uh, I always like to look at Windy uh, and take a look. But they project out, It's like like Ali says, it's not really as accurate f- more than three days out. But at least you can get a general idea. Sure. Yep. Uh, and I can pretty much guarantee you, Brian Ray and Lori aren't going to run the boat if it's if, if you're going to get hurt. So. And, and it's not and, like you're on a yeah 21-footer. Yeah, you're going to so, be okay. That's so, the part I was going to say. You're, <laughs> on, you're on the angler. You're, you're on the just angler, fine. <laughs> and you know that uh, you're going to be in the right zone and, uh, and be in the right place at the right time, for sure. No doubt. Thanks a lot for the call. That does free up. 213-432-1090 open right now. I had another text I wanted to read from Gary in Huntington Beach. Says, Hi, Ollie. In your experience, what moon phases are the very best for bluefin? I've got a trip in July about three days after a full. I just wanted your input on the timing of my trip. You don't want my input. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I, I think Rick will agree. I mean, if I, so I'm booking people, you know, to come fish with me on my boat and charters and clients from around the country that come out and fish with me. Uh, I always like the days leading into the full moon. Um, you know, you get into the into the heart of the, of the season, and the fish will generally bite right through the full. But typically, like those three, four, five days leading up to the full moon, they will bite like crazy, um, and then they'll kind of stick their nose in the mud a lot of times for a couple, three days after the full, and then it's sort of starts to wake up again going from there so if you're looking at a calendar and you're looking to go fish a fish that's not a wahoo not a swordfish i'm i'm definitely liking pre-moon pretty much anywhere i mean when we schedule a local knowledge shoot on the other side of the world we make sure we're not there on a full moon it just goofy stuff can happen and it's not just fishing i'm a big deer hunter i don't want a deer hunter on a full moon either they just get weird so it's like leading up to it there's kind of a climax usually a couple of days before or even on the day of the full moon and then typically they'll kind of stick their nose in the mud now when we get in the middle of summer and early fall fishing when things are just bonkers and there's fish in every direction they really don't seem to care as much and you'll be in july you're probably good you'll probably be in july you'll probably be okay yeah in august i really wouldn't worry about it too much and and you know what there's never a bad time to go fishing here there's always something to catch and i want to add like i don't know that the i don't know that the right word is stick their nose in the mud as much as it is They'll probably do something different, you know, yeah. and like, and sometimes the different is regroup and and you know and wolf pack up or they'll foam up a bunch or they'll be foamers where there was just fish that you were sitting in one spot and catch them on the flyer. Like, I, I think that they don't always do something bad, but it is pretty common that they do something different. They might make a move, they might show up in a different spot, and and sometimes that move means they roll into a new area with a bunch of bait and they bite like nails. So I don't I don't think it's always a bad thing, but it, it often is a different thing. 
Yeah. yeah. No, good good stuff. Yeah, thanks a lot for the, the text. Very good. Well, it's time for the catch report. Yeah, it is, bro. And as always, it's sponsored by fishdope.com. And today, that fishdope.com report is sponsored by the best quality, easy in and out, and lowest fuel prices. We talked about that earlier. What an important deal that is. And that's Summit Gasoline at the San Diego Sports Arena. Pull up to the expanded Summit Gasoline and get those low, low gas and diesel prices for your car, truck, and your boat. They can now accommodate 24 cars and trucks to fuel at the same time plus 12 diesel pumps. The Bistro is full of everything you need for a great day in the water, plus you get 100 pounds of free ice with a 35-gallon fill. Say hi to Martha and their friendly staff at Summit Gasoline. Free ice for Let's Talk Hookup listeners and always those low prices at the San Diego Sports Arena. We got Marcos from C4 Sport Fishing standing by this morning. Morning, Marcos. Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Morning. Great. Hey, Good, Good morning. morning. Oh, we definitely had some uh, nice half-day fishing this week, and once again, the weather did not play nice, and we've had a few cancellations here over the last few days, but hey, on land, the weather's been beautiful, lots of you know nice weather there, but not as nice on the water. Earlier in the week, very good fishing on those half days, you know, with that uh, bottom fishing opening back up, a lot of rock fishing reds, mix of white fish, sheep heads, sculpin in there also, pretty good fishing all around there, and unfortunately, don't have much else to report, everyone else kind of, like I said, suffered that weather there, but... It, like we talked about last week, even after this weather, every time that weather clears up when we get back out there, the fishing just stays good. So it hasn't really hurt us too much in the long run there. So check the website, seaforthlanding.com. Got those half-day trips on the new Seaforth up there, very good bottom fishing. And once it cooperates, we'll be, again, looking for bass and other surface fish there. Uh, the San Diego coming online pretty quick. Uh, we're well, about a month out, you know, April 1st or excuse me, May 1st, so they've got their first trip online, and they've got a few months scheduled out there, and as we talk about, those trips fill up really quick. So now's the time to make those reservations for full days. Got those day and a half on a tribute. We've got some other two days and longer trips mixed in there also. All on the website right there. Give us a call at the office, 619-224-3383. More than happy to help you guys out, get a trip set up for you, and get you guys out there fishing. Well, certainly some good fishing to be had, Marcos. And like you say, the, you know, we've been talking about it all morning, but with the forecast of good weather finally in front of us, I think we're in for nothing but good from here on out. And like you say, there's been, a, been plenty, of, plenty of good fishing through the you know, weather ups and downs, and with very good in front of us, I think we got nothing but good clear skies ahead. I think we need to talk to someone about getting a small refund on the Sunshine Tax this year because <laughs> yeah, man, no doubt. Agree. We'll agree. Talk to Yusuf well, hopefully that. we'll get that. Hopefully we'll get that coming soon. Hey, Marcos, appreciate that. Thanks very much, and we will talk to you next Saturday. Talk to you then, guys. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Hey, want to remind you, the Catch Board sponsored part by the Fish Pros at Fisherman's Processing in San Diego, where you can get the premier processing experience. Check out the brand new and easier online system to book your processing orders for your long-range trips. Now with the addition of new team members, Fisherman's Processing stays far ahead of the rest. More same-day capacity, the finest customer service. Stop by their location in Old Town on Taylor Street or check Fisherman'sProcessing.com and make your reservation today. Yeah, for sure. And uh, want to get through, here's your chance. 213-432-1090. Open right now. The phones are open. JP's standing by. And uh, you have a chance to win your very own one-year membership to FishDope.com. Over 200 bucks. You get through on the lines, and uh, you may be the lucky winner there. I have a great text here from Jimmy in San Marcos. He says, the new HD Bathy Paps maps on FishDope are awesome. Are there any plans to add more, maybe some in La Jolla? Yeah, for sure. That's one of the things that we've got coming for this year. Um, we are so our scientists. He, that's what he loves. He geeks out on those bathy map. maps and also what's a bathy map? A bathymetric map. That basically those maps where you see the contour yeah. lines on them. That's what we call a bathy map. And yeah. it's you know it shows you how the coastline is changing, just like you'd have on your simrad or whatever. But we're going to do a lot higher quality fishing charts for both fish dope and sat fish in the coming future. Um, there's actually just a huge market for charts, and that was something we sort of overlooked. We had you know all the normal spots you'd have and all the stock spots, but we want to dial in and get you some more HD stuff there and, and uh, you know, something you can work with right off of your phone. 
Wow, that, that, and that's just one of the tools on fish dope. I mean, there's so many. Yeah, it's hard to so list. So and, and it's funny. Everybody likes something a little bit different. But at the end of the day, you know, it's those those SSTs and those those up to date fish reports is what really drives things. Yeah, for sure. Hey, uh, Mike Lom from Captain Rollo's Kids at Sea uh, wanted me to be sure to remind everybody tomorrow at Day at the Docks. It's the big event for Captain Rollo's Kids at Sea. Friends of Rollo. It's the huge, grand, the huge, huge. Tackle sale, used tackle sale. They collect tackle all year long, and a lot of it. It's crazy. I mean, a lot of good stuff in there. And this is when they sell it. It's tomorrow at day at the docks. We're a drop-off center, and we see stuff all the time. I think the coolest thing I saw go through earlier this year was uh, Dart dropped off one of his Loomis bitching like eight foot bait rods. You know, like a fifteen to twenty five pound type bait rod, and you know, it's, like we. we We've done like all of uh, Bob Bob's rods like over the years, and like all of them have a sheephead sticker on them. And you know this rod's wrapped red and black with a little sheephead sticker, and it's got Dart's name on it. Like I saw that that's in the in the in the bin for rods to buy yeah. this year. Tons and tons of like previous generation and current generation Trinidad's jig. Like it's just it's it's wild. I, I just know the number of stuff that we see that comes through Fisherman's Landing, and we're one of many drop off locations. There's so much, so much. So, so much stuff. It's great. Yeah, for sure. And I got a call from Tom Green, the the, the fish spotter. Um, he's moving, and he's got all his tackle, all his grandpa's tackle, um, because he's moving to Denver. So doesn't need any saltwater tackle over there. So he says, what can I do with this? I said, give it to friends of Rallo. So Carl Sabonis, the, the fish spotter, was yep. driving through town. Picked up all his gear, filled a tr- pickup truck load, and is bringing it to uh, Tim to coordinate to get to the sale that's for that's this awesome. weekend. So, but there's that's just one sample of many calls I get throughout the year, and I know that you see Damn. and you take that people just say, "Hey, I have all this." Great tackle I don't use anymore. I want to donate it and get a tax deduction. F- uh, f- it's because it's a 501c3 corporation and give it to, to take kids fishing. Yeah, I might be dropping some stuff off at your house tonight, Rick. I, I got yeah, a pile got of stuff, stuff, stuff that too, I've been yeah. waiting to donate, yeah. so this would be a good time to roll. I don't yeah. want it out of the And garage. don't be afraid to bring it down today at the docks tomorrow, cool. too. Yeah, we'll take it uh, they'll yeah. take it and sell it and, and price it right then. But uh, that's going on tomorrow at Day at the Docks, uh, the giant used tackle sale for Friends of Rollo. It's it's I mean it's it's going to blow your mind how good it is this year, and it's also uh, you buy two grand raffle tickets and you get to spin the wheel for free and win some unbelievable prices. So awesome! So that's unbelievable. And at the end of the day, they're giving away all those grand raffle prizes. Tomorrow at Day of the Docks. This is the annual fundraiser that's been uh, coordinated throughout the whole year. It all all ends tomorrow afternoon. So come down, spin the wheel, buy a grand raffle, take kids fishing, buy a bunch of used tackle. Um, Mike Lum will be there. Tim Baker will be there. Howard will be there. And... A very special appearance from Harold Davis. Hey, Davis. So wow, that's you're reason the enough. Yeah, yeah, he's freezing into town. So it's a big event. So that'll be happening at Day at the Docks tomorrow. So you don't want to miss it. Uh, you can drop off all of the old. So the, all the old surface iron goes to my house directly. Um, got and, it. And then, yeah, you the imagine rest, the rest of it could just come on. I've got some. Yeah. The first thing yeah, I no asked problem, Tom, yeah. I said, "How much surface iron is in yeah. in that?" He goes, "Oh, it's a lot." So I was like, "Oh, no, swim." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think we all know Dave Pfeiffer is going to be there. At 4 a.m. Yeah. with a, with a <laughs> yeah, sack of money. Through, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, uh, hey, you have a great text there, Rick? I thought so, for sure. It's uh, from Jeff in Costa Mesa. It says, hey, guys, so much killer info. My mind's going to explode. Uh, does fish dope have anything akin to current movement? Such as, do you have, <clears throat> and, and as such, do you have preferences um, on seeing advantage when fishing Catalina Island with incoming and outgoing tide? Oh, I think what I know what he's talking about. He's talking about like a current chart. Right. We don't have that right now. We have access to the data, and that is something that we've talked about implementing. You're going to see, like, just business wide for us, we're putting a huge emphasis on sat fish and fish dope in the coming years. And when I say huge emphasis, that means the programmer coming to me asking me for a bunch of money to add more features, <laughs> add more maps, add more zones. So we, we've really recommitted ourselves to that. That we're going to, well, you know, that's that, that pocketbook. I'm sitting on it right now. We don't, <laughs> don't like to open it too often. By the way, who's buying lunch? Uh, <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you're going to see a lot of those improvements. Uh, the thing with some of those current charts, though, that I will warn you is when current gets near structure like an island, it, stuff happens. Based on tide, you've got a lot of factors. It's not the same as seeing the currents offshore, which are more stable. They're not getting bumped into. They're not rolling around. Stuff up tight to a piece of land, you, you're, you're going to want to trust your eyeballs first. That was so. What was going to be my question was how you know how a chart can keep up with things. You know, I mean, we see it all the time when you're sitting on the anchor and you're catching fish, and all of a sudden it dies, or vice versa. You're hanging, then all of a sudden it get fires off and it starts biting. Like it just, yep. it seems like it changes too fast to be utilized in a. In the chart that he's talking about, at an island fishing somewhere. It does. It, I mean, and I, and, you know, we used to fish sea bass back right next to each other, and the current only changes once you get all your crap out and your anchors <laughs> exactly. down, right? Exactly. All of a sudden, you ask your boats pointed out to sea, and, and you might as well be on the couch. You're, you're not. It's so it's, it is such a micro thing. I think you got to trust your eyes. Now, offshore, obviously, that stuff happens on a bigger scale and, and is easier to track. But close to the islands, I mean, the the old the old uh, tools of reading watercolor, seeing what the kelp's doing. You know, you're typically looking for that down and in current which is what gets stuff fired up and, and sends your chum into the into the kelp so. offshore current directions if that is a, a route that that happens at some point later would that be a, would that be a tool to help you find kelps is that just to help you find the direction that the water's moving is it direction the fish are moving like how how is that something that helps you offshore yeah i think the answer is yes mm -hmm. it'll kind of help you find everything you know and then the, the strength of that current a lot of times plays a factor and you know we talk about it all the time like this time of year with the california current is our predominant current coming down the coast well like right now it peters out and then we get the davidson current pushing up the coast and that's what brings us that warm water the pelagics and really opens the doors and stuff um much much more of a macro scale than you know anybody who sat on the anchor right. at, at catalina can tell you you you're, the back of your boat could be pointing three directions in three hours wow let's jump back on the phones rick you got it bro how about we talk to john he's called us from escondido this morning what's up john welcome to let's talk hookup Hey, good morning, gentlemen. And uh, I call way too much because your guy didn't even ask me. Right here, I knew it was John from Escadino, and you just put me in the call street. So that, that, I thought that was funny. But uh, uh, J funny. Well, JP's just on. Uh, that's the key. He, he, he most definitely is. He most definitely is. But my, my, my question's for Ollie. And so I follow you a little bit, and uh, your buddy on the, uh, on the East Coast. And you guys talk about the Abyss batteries for the... Um, uh, electric reels because they're real small. They strap to the rod. You don't have a cord going to a hip bag. Can you talk a little bit about that? You know, they legit. Yeah, I can for sure. Um, they're awesome in a nutshell. So Abyss. We have a very strong love-hate relationship with kite reel and electric reel batteries. Prior to a couple years ago, the only batteries we could get kind of came off of eBay or some weird website, and they worked fine when they worked. But the problem was, and I see Ricky shaking his head, if you got a year out of one, you were styling. Like, they would die so fast. They were using crap batteries, crap tech, whatever, and they weren't cheap. I mean, I think the smaller ones were, what, 150 and the big ones were too Bills. And nothing would frustrate you more than like you'd go and you'd have two of them and they'd have full charge and you'd put one on and it would it would you would even wind in halfway and it would just in, in instantly be dead again. Like in the beginning they would work just fine and then you yep. couldn't recharge. And two drops of water that thing was done. So the guys from Abyss had actually reached out to me because I think they saw me talking about batteries or something and they're like, hey, we want you to try a couple of these. I'm like, sure, you know, got them. And I'm like, I won't even say a word about them until we beat on them for a full season. And that's pretty much what we did, and I don't just are use they them. lithium? They're lithium. Yeah. yeah, they're they're lithium. They're almost in the same package as what you're familiar with, but it's a high quality battery cell. It's got there's like a regulator technology that's in the top of the battery, right. and that keeps the battery from overcharging. You know, going too dead where you have to that you can jump start them again. It, right. it takes care of all of those problems, and we beat the hell out of them when they're on that kite rod, and we're sitting there, we're getting blow ups, we're moving the. I mean, leave the kite rod in the wrong spot, and now it's getting pelted with water as you run from spot to. Spot. I've got my original ones, my original Abyss Real batteries. I think they're now two years old. Have never even hiccuped. They work as good as the day I got them. And one of the best things about them, which seems so stupid and simple, is it's got a battery meter right on the side of it. You push a little button on the side of the battery, cool. it tells you how charged yeah. it is. It's a, it's huge because when you got two or three of these things sitting around, you don't know right. which is good, which is dead, yeah. whatever. I, I can't say enough good things about them. And they also make killer lithium boat batteries. And you know, my boat, my new boat can 
contenders here in town, and that's uh, right on the project punch list here is we're going to swap out all of those brand-new AGM batteries and put lithium in so I get years and years of reliable service. Yeah, our, our sponsor, Norsk Lithium Batteries, the same, made for marine use, and that's the key. That is the key. Marine use. For and their sure. smaller batteries also have the um, the uh, indicator on the top of the battery. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, closed cells and, and made for the durability. That's the key. Some of these batteries, they don't take banging around. Nope. And that doesn't work on a boat. Dude, right? I mean, yeah, it, yeah. Stuff gets beat yeah. up. I mean, so you have to get ones like Norsk or um, the one that uh, Ali is promoting there uh, that are made for marine use. I did, yeah, I didn't even know about the Norsk thing. I'll have to pick your brain on that a little bit. Yeah, but good I've people. been been very happy. Sounds like you guys have got a good solution. Yeah. Whatever you do, don't buy them on eBay. Yeah, like, it's no. Sucks. Take it from me. Take it from Ricky. They have got me for six, eight hundred dollars in batteries, and they just don't hold up. Yeah. And having having yourself, like you say, the ability to move around is so nice too. Oh, totally. like, we we just made long pigtails out of frustration, but like it's just not the same. It's not the same as being able to put it in a rod holder up top and just get it out of the way for a quick second. Like having having a small battery pack is where it's at. Yeah, just, and, and the deep drop stuff that we're doing a ton of now with the electrics. You know, with the reg changes, it's just you got this little tiny reel with a little battery, little battery. You can move all around the yeah. boat, and yeah. one of those big batteries will last us if you're pulling, you know, three three pound weights from shoot four hundred to yeah. twelve hundred feet. You get almost a full day out of them if you don't get the entire day. Yeah, the the Norsk uh, lithium that I have for uh, the smaller one, it weighs. 2.7 pounds. Yeah, that's about it's what the, I would say these are. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's about the size of a small burrito. It's yeah. not, there's, there's not a lot to it, and it that would runs be one hell all of a burrito, day man. long. <laughs> I'm not saying I wouldn't eat it. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Hey, good question, though. Thanks a lot for the call. Yeah, the, so you're going lithium on your boat. Yeah, I do. I'm, I'm looking forward to upgrading yeah. it. My new boat's got a cabin. It's got an AC. It's got right. a sea keeper. I got a lot of wow. stuff going on in there. I think from the factory, I have, uh, let's see, five. No, there's more than that. There's three, there's seven... I have nine batteries. Wow. Wow. So, no kidding. Yeah, You'll be able it, to reduce the number of batteries. I'll be able to cut. Like, my Sea Keeper will go from two batteries to one. Right. Um, I do like, like, on the engines, I have three engines. I want three batteries. That's, like, yeah. non negotiable. Really? And then instead of having four mixed batteries for the house, I'll just have one. So, will you go? One will you still two. do lead acid for your starting batteries? No. Lithium is really? Lithium's away. doing it. Yeah. You know, Mercury was like. Uh, oh, because it's a Mercury. Yeah. They didn't want to mess with them there for a bit until the tech was proven and all that. And yeah. I think a year and a half, two years ago, Mercury came out and said, no, no problems with the warranty or any of that stuff and you know again saving weight even in a boat as big as mine weights everything you shave some of that weight you burn less fuel we yeah, talked so much to the norris guys and they basically said the same thing you know i, I have a yamaha on our boat and they just said look the, the the motor the battery is completely fine for it yamaha is just so slow not not in a bad way like just so slow to saying like yes cautious. It's fine. You, i mean you have to be the right word, yeah totally. yeah totally ca- i mean yeah. dude that that's and, a thirty thousand dollar investment on the back of your boat right and and just like you said before too some lithium batteries Batteries are crap. You know, there's a lot of really junk stuff out there that if you don't have a high end manufacturer, like they don't want you to buy a, a crummy Amazon battery that says it's lithium and, and it only costs you 150 bucks and then put it on your motor and then have a starting issue with it. Yeah, and I mean, that is the, the one thing that we didn't talk about with cheap lithium batteries is danger. Right. Very we, much. We so. have, totally. I, I know personally three different friends that have had their houses. One guy was a garage, the other two were houses burnt to the ground wow. by Chinese batteries. Wow. One, one was a drone. Drone. One was one of those uh, hoverboards charging it, and then the other one was a uh, an e-bike battery. Crazy. So, like, when I charge even my good known quality batteries at home, I've got one of those, you know, those pen doormats that are like four foot mm-hmm. by three foot in my in my shop. I lay my battery in the middle of that rubber mat with the cord going to it. I don't have it anywhere near, and just in case, I've heard enough stories. Like, lithium can be very, very volatile, but you get a good quality battery, it's well, the best thing ever. And they and they have automatic shutoff, they like do, the Norsk, and, and I'm sure you're correct, going to do the, correct. The Nor- but they have uh, like when it's done charging. It's it's shut off. Yep. Yep. No, yeah. and it just it's not something you, you can't. We had a drone it. deep six once, and the battery caught on fire and like exploded. Nice. It was oh, nice. terrible, and it was inside my backpack, which was even better. Oh yeah. Yeah. We like get back in. We're taking showers. We're cracking a beer, and like, what's that smoke uh, coming under the window? We, it was in the Bahamas. We opened up the door. My backpack's three alarm. Oh my. Get out of here. From and that was a DJI battery, good quality battery, wow. but we got it wet. 
and it got uh, very wet and salt water again in those. Again, only buy a quality lithium battery. Yeah. It, it's really, Made really for scary. marine use. For marine use, and yeah. he, I mean, even at home with like your kids' toys and stuff like that, those things are no joke. Yeah, you know, I'm a, a child and I still play with RC cars and like the badass <laughs> batteries that go in my RC truck. I put them inside a fireproof bag yeah, to charge them smart. for just that reason. That's wild. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Hookup coming here, including more of your phone calls and texts. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. This is Rock Rick for Adventure and Camping, where they bring the adventure to you. If you enjoy camping in the eastern Sierra but don't own an RV or a trailer or simply don't want the hassle, let Adventure and Camping park it for you. Check out their website, adventureandcamping.com. Select from over 75 campgrounds they serve. Decide on a trailer floor plan that fits your needs. Request a quote for your desired vacation dates. Then just show up and start your adventure. Adventure and Camping makes it so simple. They deliver the trailer to your spot and you enjoy a clean, spacious trailer. When it comes time to go home, just close the door and drive away. It doesn't get any easier. If you enjoy camping in the eastern Sierra but don't want the hassle, Adventure and Camping is for you. Check out AdventureandCamping.com for details. Make sure you mentioned that Rock Cod Rick sent you for a special price. AdventureInCamping.com The lighter the bite and the cleaner the water means one thing. You need a thinner leader for more natural presentations. That's where Seaguar Gold Label Leader Material shines. It's Seaguar's thinnest leader material yet. That means it's even less visible underwater and creates more natural presentations for better catch rates on leader-shy fish. With exceptional knot and tinsel strength, this advanced leader material is now available from 2-pound test for fishing trout in the Sierra to 80-pound test for big yellowfin in Guadalupe. Get Seaguar Gold Label at your favorite tackle dealer or learn more at Seaguar.com. For quality, the Islander out of Fisherman's Landing is a favorite among anglers. But Islander Charters is much more than great fishing. The quality of the captains and crew, as well as the great meals and service, speak for themselves. Comfortable staterooms, a super clean and well taken care of boat, are just a few of the reasons the Islander is so popular. The Islander specializes in one and a half to five day fishing. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islandersportfishing.com. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest it's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. This is Pete, and I hear it all the time. That Jim and Mary at Poway Valley Collision are amazing. I took my car to Poway Valley Collision, mentioned Let's Talk Hookup, and they gave us VIP treatment, fixed our car, and even gave us a special price. Believe me when I say Poway Valley Collision is worth the drive from anywhere in the Southland. At some point, your car will need a body repair, and I'm confident in saying it pays to go to Poway Valley Collision. Our listeners can save hundreds of dollars on your next car or truck repair. They work with most insurance companies, including Auto Club, MetLife, Wawanisa, and more. All you do is call Jim, Mary, or any of their team members, and they do all the rest. No hassles, just top-notch work and VIP treatment. When you take your car or truck to Poway Valley Collision, the job and experience will be top-notch. Get it fixed right at Poway Valley Collision. 14211 Garden Road in Poway. Check PowayValleyCollision.com. Welcome! Up, text rolling through. This is such a fun show. For Having sure. the boys in here. Yeah, it's uh, just super information from uh, from Yosef about real estate and uh, income and, and selling your house, buying a house, or, or, or buying rental property or investments and stuff like that. And then, of course, Ali kind of knows pretty much everything about everything there is on the ocean. <laughs> just right. just ask him. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I have a great text here from uh, Rodney uh, who's uh, asking about uh, ADUs. He says, uh, good morning. He's from Poway. And is uh, an ADU worth building prior to selling your home? Um, of course, what is an ADU, first of all? An ADU is an auxiliary dwelling unit. And our ADU laws have gotten really, really loose for yes. the most part. Too loose. Um, <laughs> yeah. In some metro areas, I would agree. Um, lots of places you can build right on the lot line. 
some places they're uh, allowing you uh, an ADU and what's considered a JDU, a junior uh, dwelling unit, which many times has to be attached. But and you don't have to justify parking anymore for anything. Yeah, for the most part. It's yeah, crazy. It's, it's nuts. And then yeah. uh, there's also SB nine which is a bill that's in place now where if it's the home that you live in and it qualifies for SB9, it's in an area, you can actually split off the ADU and sell it as a condo. No. Yes. Really? So, so that could are happen? going crazy for it right now. Wow. Because you go buy a place, you build an ADU, you put a driveway along the side, now you've got two houses. Yeah. And you can sell them individually, so it's not like a total oh, square foot. So is that a done deal, or is it going through? Oh, it's a done deal. Oh, it's already a done yeah. deal. You can yeah, do people it. are doing it. Wow. Yep. So is it? So is it, the question for Rodney is: It worth doing before? He I'd sells imagine his house? so. In uh, in Poway, I would I would say yes. Poway is uh, a booming just because, market. Yeah, it's a booming market. Everybody wants that school district. The square footage price definitely outweighs what it's going to cost you to build. Uh huh. So you're going to get gains, maybe even you know double on the square footage, yeah, you know, wow. for what your gains are going to be. And lots of times, if you've got an older house, which this may be, or maybe a newer house with the big lot, just adding that extra square footage bumps you into a different comp range mm -hmm. for comparable homes. Because now you've got this extra square footage, and it's an ADU, so right. people pay for that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. And, Great uh, stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. That's what you get from Yosef, right? He <laughs> kind of got got it all covered. Let's jump back. On the... Nobody stumped him once yet. No, you know, not that's yet. That's great no, info, man. That's good. awesome. Let's yeah. jump back on the phones, Rick. How about Dan from El Cajon this morning? Good morning, Dan. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hello. There he is. Hi, Dan. Hello. Just beat the buzzer. Okay. Hi. <laughs> I'm quick too. Huh? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Having trouble with my speaker here. Um, do you, does Fish Soap have? Uh, navigational, or does it tell you where the Mexican border is, or uh, restricted areas to fish is? Yeah, absolutely. All the MLPAs are lined out. All the Mexican border is there. It's got full charts. I mean, that's kind of the base of everything, and then we sort of lay the data over the top of that chart. And like we were talking about earlier, that chart's even going to start having more detail to it in the bathymetric side to help you actually put you on fish of your own, you know, for inshore stuff and finding those little outcroppings and and all that good stuff. But yeah, it's definitely all in there. It'll keep you out of jail. You'll be fine. And one of the coolest features about Fish Dope is if you load the app up, like literally as I'm idling out or you're getting bait it'll download into your phone and then you just hit the little position button on it and it'll show your position relative to the coastline no the chart oh, I didn't know whatever that. oh yeah no you can throw it right on your dash and so you can work your way right up and down the temp breaks right from your phone and you know if you want to know where that temp breaks at you just tap it a little window pops up and it gives you the gps coordinate so you can kind of run to it and then put your phone up there on the dash and and you can see yourself on the chart working up and down the temperature breaks so, see, so I, I use fish yeah. dope all the time and i didn't yeah. even know that feature. i didn't know that that's, like, that's Awesome. So, That's all in so the basically, app. on your phone, you have the Fish Dope app on yep. your phone, mm -hmm. yep. which is part of the subscription. Yeah. Yeah. And then you download the, the chart. You, well, it'll do it automatically. So when you fire it up, you know, it takes a minute. It's got the status bar and it says loading, right. da, da, da. So what that's doing is it's taking the latest charts, all of them that are available, sucking them into your phone, and it, now they're installed in your phone. Once you lose service, you've still got all your charts. And then and, and because of the GPS uh, capability of, of your the, phone, of your it'll phone. show you exactly show the you chart where you are. Yeah. I mean, you can pull it up now and look at your, like, if I was sitting at my house in El Cajon, it's going to show me right you know, in my living room wow. on the That's chart. That's huge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's no, cool. it really makes it easy. It, no helps you it helps you relate your position to where you are on that water. Yeah, good That's stuff. Cool. Well, I had a fun text. Says, Good morning, guys. Question for Ali uh, about fishing dolphin pods. Um, what are the things that you're looking for on dolphin, whether um, you think you should stop and fish, throw bait, troll through them, decide if they're holding fish, not, etc. Give us a full rundown on fishing the dolphin. That's from Matt in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, okay, Matt. So that's one of my favorite things to do. It's always like, uh, I don't know, like the box of chocolates thing, right? You don't know if it's holding. You don't know if, it, if there's fish with them or whatever. But the, the first thing I'm looking for, well, the most important thing about the dolphin schools is don't run them over. And guys will go running right into them, and they will scatter the dolphin, which scatters the fish, and you can't pick them off. So the most important thing is always work in the perimeter. Now, whether you choose to troll or throw bait or a combination of both, that's totally up to you. Um, I am typically, if I 
already have trolling lures in the water and I see the dolphin nearby, then I'm going to troll through them just because it doesn't cost me anything. Work the edges, get out in front of them. Um, and then the second big indicator for me is birds. If you see those turns all wadded up on those dolphin, especially if the dolphin aren't traveling, they're kind of milling around, there's almost always fish on them. Turns are always our friend. The white birds with the black mass, they're the biggest indicator of game fish anywhere. Um, last couple of years have been really weird. With, I don't know where the turns went, but we were catching fish off of seagulls and stuff like that, which is very untraditional. Um, and if I see those birds, I'm probably going to run in front of them or, you know, I'm stopping 100 yards away from the dolphin. I'm going to gonna idle in. I'll run up to them, get to about 100 yards. I'll idle into them, and I'm always trying to get out in front. The tuna, tuna are typically in front of the dolphin leading the way, and you'll see that with the birds, especially when they're feeding. More times than not, then once you get in there and start messing stuff up, they'll squirt off to one side or the other. Again, watch the birds and watch your sounder. Sometimes we're driving into them when we're trolling, and I'll get them on the meter. You know, they'll be very shallow typically, 30, 40, 50 feet under the boat. We start throwing chum, they blow up, and that's pretty much can end your day if you get on a good one. Um, when you're looking at your sounder, and I can't stress this enough, when you run through dolphin, you will meter the air that comes out of the dolphin. Your sounder is tuned to see air in the water, air bladders inside of fish. So when you see vertical lines on your sounder, those are dolphin. Don't wish your way into thinking that's a school of fish. Don't waste your time. If the lines are vertical, those are just air bubbles coming up out of the dolphin. Now when you see those boomerangs or the big clusters with the red in it, that's going to be your fish. Because the dolphin aren't going to aren't going to show red on your on your. They don't. Know. No, in fact, yeah. the, the dolphin themselves don't even mark that well. It's the yeah. air that's coming out of their blowholes oh, underwater, and it marks like crazy. Yeah. But it's super easy to discern because air bubbles are in, in the water going to go up and down vertically. And you can tell when you run over a, a school of dolphins that's holding. You'll see it. You'll see obviously. it usually on the meter. Yeah. yeah, but sometimes they're off to the side and you don't yeah, really see them. See and them. so you know, another thing to do when you're trolling into them is have a guy on the bow throwing a popper around the edges oh. of it again. Don't throw it in the middle of flipper because the fish aren't there, but kind of work the edges with a popper or a colt sniper or your favorite little metal lure, you know, around the edges. And just like any kind of fishing, it's like hooking that first one, rings the dinner bell, you know, and right. gets them fired up. Right. A lot of times one stop on those dolphin. We had a, we had some last year. I think I had to move one time, and I think we had limits for six people. And that ha- especially during the week when you've got it all to yourself so, and yeah. nobody's stepping on you, you don't have to go and looking for not far for from home either. Not far at all. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, cool. it's so much fun fish. I mean, you can, oh, yeah. a lot of times you find that's, them six, eight miles. Hope we get that this Out year. It's coming, man. I, I, know I really Elsa's believe that. It, right? It's coming. One thing Holly didn't mention is the slap on other sides. Ah. Too. Yeah, that's Just always a reading, good indicator. The dolphins you know, if they're if well. they're milling around and kind of slapping their sides, that's a lot. We call that a side slapper, and a lot of times they will be more inclined to hold. But single biggest indicator, hands down, is turn birds. Hands down. down. Yeah. On the, especially on toward the front of the pack. Up, out in front of the pack, or kind of off ahead and off to the side a little bit. That's where the fish are going to be. And sometimes. Are so loaded, like you could literally throw a hot dog in the middle of it, and you're going to get bit. But, yeah. Uh, but typically, you know, you get small, medium schools that are going to be running with with the dolphin, and, and they're going to be out front. Cool. Well, let's jump back on the phones, Rick. You got it. How about this time we talk to John, who's calling us from Huntington Beach? What's up, John? Welcome to Let's Talk Cook Up. Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, this is an awesome show. We could make it go another two or three hours. Um, uh, my question is for Ali: um, Have you ever fished for like albacore up? up north of like in in washington westport or up in those uh, areas up there and for you seth uh we need a new roof on our house but we've been toying with the idea of going solar on top of that um any recommendations i've heard some kind of horror stories about solar right now and I just wanted to pick you guys' brain on those two things. Yeah, on the on the fishing up north, Jason and I did. So we have a lot of Bloody Dex guys up there, and we've gotten to be friends with some of them. They invited us up there about a decade ago to go do the albacore thing. It was cool. It was wild. I mean, the weather was not great at all. I mean, we were we as were usual, rocking, right? As usual, for sure. They're not great and are not great. Are so are two totally, and I'm fine with yeah. that. I like <laughs> our not great so much better. Yeah. 
But yeah, I mean, it was it was weird. It was like a homecoming or something. You know, it's like That's put right. out those little tiny feathers and you drag them around. One goes off, and out go the swim baits and the you know and the anchovy. And the other thing too that was very different was hug your bait man because that bait that they had yeah. up there was not like it's what not we are used to at no dude they're like practically in a giant bucket you know and it's live for sure but it is not cured it doesn't have any age on it they don't have the facilities to hold as much of it and allow it to cure itself and all that but i think we caught i mean we had a slow day and we caught 20 something so it was it was albacore fishing rough weather caught a bunch of them nice and it was really cool and plus there's dungeness crab which doesn't hurt for making, hurt. making yeah. a trip up there yosef what about the solar so solar, there are a lot of people out there that will a rip lot, people off, a and lot of criminals I am in that probably one to five. One in every five houses has a ridiculous lease on it. I've got one in Canyon Lake that's got like a seventy thousand dollar lease on it, and they only replaced half the roof when they did it. Wow! So do not lease. Um, I recommend yeah, Cal State Solar. They do Southern California. They've done my house. They've done okay. Ollie's house. Um, Cal State Solar. You got yeah. it. And don't awesome. do what I just did. Is uh, I had a, I had solar put on my house uh, four years ago. It was game changer. I mean, it was like basically it paid for itself in three years, three, maybe three and a half years. Yeah. But they um, four years later, I need a new roof, which I just did. Oh. And they charged me $4,000, the same company that put it on, $4,000 to take it off. And I said, well, wait a minute. Why didn't you tell me? I, they go, oh, well, we gave you a roofing quote. And I said, but you said my roof was fine. And they go, well, we gave you a roofing quote, and that that covers our liability. Oh, yeah, so, if, I don't recommend that company anymore. If, <laughs> if your roof is halfway worn, you know... At, I just replace it. Just replace it. it. Yeah, and that's that's the point. Is that that, that it, our roof was tw- like sixteen years old. Now it's twenty years old. If you're that in that phase, just do the do the roof at the same time you do the solar and write yes. it off. Yeah, and you <laughs> get a tax credit for Absolutely. it as long as it's a, you know one of the newer composite products right. has some kind of cooling factor to it. You get a tax credit yeah. to it. You can upgrade your HVACs and there's all other kinds of things you can do as well to with get that the, with that credit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Good info. Hey, when we come back, we're gonna find out who's got themselves a full one year subscription to local knowledge. More let's talk up, or excuse me to uh, <laughs> to fishdope.com. More let's talk up on the mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. The name that stands out among anglers is Fisherman's Landing, your top choice in local and long-range fishing. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Our hardworking crew will make sure your fishing experience is one to remember. We offer the finest open party trips from one to three days, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet is second to none. Fisherman's Landing is a full-service operation offering great half-day trips on the Dolphin and full-day open party trips on the spacious and comfortable Liberty. Since we introduced the full-day trips at Fisherman's Landing, the 85-foot Liberty has become a favorite among full-day operations with bunks for your comfort, huge bit capacity, and RSW fish holds to keep your catch fresh. Plus, Liberty has a big modern galley and two interior heads with showers. All our open party trips from half-day, full, or one- to three-day trips can easily be booked online at Fisherman'sLanding.com or give us a call at 619-221-8500. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Day at the Docks is back Sunday, April 7th, and Fisherman's Landing Tackle will have our best booth ever. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Our Day at the Docks booth, both in the shop and out in the parking lot, will feature the Shimano lineup of rods, reels, and lures, like Talica reels, Terramar rods, and current sniper lures. And as always, our expert staff at Fisherman's Landing Tackle will help you select that perfect Shimano setup. Day at the Docks and Fisherman's Landing Tackle, Sunday, April 7th. Great deals on Shimano. This is Bob- Bob Hoots at Costa Sunglasses. Visual signs are a critical part of my fishing program, from bay bass to bluefin. I wear Costas to see what's out there. Costas are built with advanced polarization technology with our 580 lens, designed to cut through the sun's glare while providing enhanced color to see more fish. Costa was founded by a group of anglers wanting a high-performance lens for every fishing application. Costa has a West Coast-style frame and lens for your adventures. CostaSunglasses.com. San Diego. 
Diego, if there's one thing we like, it's choices. And your San Diego County Ford dealer is the place to start. With great offers on a full lineup of vehicles and available powertrains, get your ideal combination of power and capability. Whether it's gas, hybrid, or all electric, you have the power to choose. Get ready and go get your own. Visit your local San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Prize coin no because coin we, we, we got a winner from Double the callers winners. and the texters. So from the texter side, congratulations, Gary in Huntington Beach. And then the callers, Don in Lakewood, you each are going to have a one-year membership to the best fishing information site available, and that's fishdope.com. Congratulations, you guys. Yeah, congratulations. And, uh, Yosef, uh, how do we get a hold of you? We want to so know good, more. Man. I mean, such good this information you had. And, you know, if, if you're buying a house, you're selling a house, you want just more information, call you. Joseph, he, he'll help you out. So you can get me on Instagram at Cal Realty, C A L R E A L T Y. You can go to my website if you'd like to get an evaluation of your home. It's SoCalHomeEval.com. No like, obligation. No it's obligation. Free. Yeah, just, you know, you can type your info in there. It'll shoot you back uh, a uh, whole list of things, or basically a cool. whole. Uh, estimate on your home all right and the range of what other homes are selling for in the area great well great yeah. and then your phone number is 619-277-2169 all right thanks joseph appreciate that and ollie how do we find all your stuff uh bdoutdoors.com fishdope.com localknowledge.tv i'm on instagram at bdoali all only right fans great all right only fans <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. very good thanks guys appreciate you guys coming in appreciate you today thanks to jp for man of the phones and the board and thanks to you out there tomorrow live at day at the docks we'll be there at day at the docks starting at 7 a.m be there Tomorrow morning, 7 to 9 a.m., right here on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio and the Let's Talk Hookup app.